don't know if you guys have heard, we've had um, some exciting news within the, our New Life uh, community. Uh, we have a, uh, a baby boy that has officially been born as of yesterday, around two or three. Let's all give it a <laughs> Just this, this big, hairy baby boy. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I assume you continue to, you know, prayers for them, obviously, as, as you know, they're, you know, just recovering from all that and all, all its details. I don't really know much about that yet, thank goodness. But, uh, you know, just, you know, continues prayers and like, uh, actually, I was, I was going to brag on, on Andy Felicia anyway already. I mean, it's, he's here, but um, I, I, just yesterday, just last night, I don't know if you guys, you know, heard the Unchained event that went on last night. Is, there, is everybody familiar, at least, with that, Unchained? Um, it's, it's a really beautiful, beautiful thing um, that uh, like Felicia and her best friend Stephanie have actually like founded and created. And so we have Andy and Felicia and then their best friends Matt and Stephanie that have really created this event. And now this giant organization that is, is uh, bringing uh, awareness to the reality of sex slavery here in Columbus, here in the United States, you know, live happening around your, your neighborhood. And it's just, it's a really beautiful thing. And it's just, I'm just saying that because it's on my mind, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I just want you at least, you know, to keep, uh, keep, you know, those, you know, that, those, both of them actually, Stephanie's pregnant as well, keep them in your prayers. And if you guys see another Unchained event, just mark it down in your calendar. It's really a really beautiful thing. You know, I just wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to at least bring it up here, you know, because it just, it just happened this last weekend that they were just all on Ohio State's campus. You know, it was, last night was just a really beautiful thing. Um, but what, what I wanted to start with this morning is actually a question for you guys, okay? It requires participation, so you guys got to say something, or else I'm going to look silly, I'll be embarrassed, and then, you know, I'll be self-conscious for some message. So here's, here's the question, all right? And so just shout it out, um, and, you know, maybe one at a time so we can all hear everybody else's answers, okay? Um, well, what are some attributes of God that you have seen recently? Either this, this last week that you've been praying for, you know, Ed left up with that, with that challenge, like pray to God, you know, to reveal himself to you. You know, what are some attributes that you've seen? Or what are some ways that you worship God, you know, today, you know, this last week, this last month? And just, you know, what, you know, just kind of voice, voice them out so we can all, we can all hear. The protector. Protector. Okay. He's a protector. We worship God because he's a protector. What else? Faithful. He's faithful. That's a good one. That's a, that's a good one for today. Extra points for that one, actually. What else? He's working behind the scenes. You know, kind of this sovereign aspect. You know, this invisible nature. He's magnificent. He is magnificent. Boom! <laughs> got, got a servant hat over here. He's an artist. He's an artist. That's a, that's a good one. I like that. It's been this magnificent masterpiece, especially this morning. You know, this great, you know, wet snow. You know, I was worried about it. I thought we would have some issues getting here. But, you know, it's just, it was a good, it's a good day. Anything else? Anything else? He's a dad. He's a dad. <laughs> Absolutely. He's a father. He's a father to his creation. I think for me personally, I, I would say this idea of lordship is what he's, you know, about. when I, I've been thinking about how I'm like, when I get my prayer journal on, usually that's one of the first things that I'm praying. So I'm just praising him because he is Lord. Uh, Tara and I have been watching uh, the Godfather series. <laughs> yeah. It kind of reminds me of this, you know, this Vito, Vito Coelho. Yeah, that's, that's a talent for, for Vito Coelho. Um, he's, he's a real Godfather, you know, and when people come into his presence, you know, he can't, you know, has his hand out, and they kiss him, they have their respect. You know, what he says, what he says goes, you know. And that's what I've been, like, praising God recently for, is he's the Lord of my life. I want to actually submit to him, you know, every, every, every morning. You know, he ultimately is accountable, or I'm ultimately accountable to him. You know, and he gives me, he sets me my direction, he, you know, he makes the rules, he is the Lord over my life. Well, anyway, that's just, that's just me personally. Here, I have another um, rhetorical question for you, so just think about this, you don't have to say anything out loud, but here's a rhetorical question. How have you seen those things? So think about how you have, you praise God, you worship God in your own life, you know, the ways you've seen him and his nature and his characteristics. How have you seen that? I would, I would argue, and I'm going to start off this morning with um, the idea that he, anything, this is actually the first point, um, anything he's revealed to us, um, we only know and can see because he himself has revealed to us. I think the way I say it here, um, the, we only know the mysteries of God because he has first revealed them to us. 
Okay, if you remember what, Ed, what uh, Caleb was saying, you know, it's like we are a yardstick. This entire earth is a yardstick tossed into the ocean. And the ocean is the uh, magnificence and the whole incredibly, you know, uh, power of, of God. You know, the yardstick doesn't have any cap capability of knowing how far the ocean extends. You know, we, we, we have to rely on God because he's so big to just reveal these attributes to us every, every day of our lives. And so he reveals, it, he reveals it through our word, through his word, as we're reading his word, or through, you know, friends, you know, or sometimes... He says it directly from his own mouth. Now, just think about that. What we're, what we're going to talk about this morning is the name of God. There's a moment and there's a few moments in the Bible where God says, I'm going to tell you my name. What? Like, God, you just said you're going to tell me my name? Like, hold on, let me get, let me get a pen. You know, like, let me write this down. Like, this is a big deal. This is right where Ed left us off last week, okay? Moses... Um, you know, is, is, is on the mountain, he's talking to God, you know, it's like, show me your glory. You know, and God's like, no, you can't, you know, can't handle that. You know, I will say my name, and I will walk in front of you. You know, we can't really be there when, when, when God walked in front of Moses, but we can, we can read his name. Okay, so that's what we're talking about this morning. Um, you guys can turn to chapter 34. I'm going to pray for us really quick, okay? Um, Father, God, we thank you for your revelations to us. Uh, we thank you for just the abundant blessing that it is just to know who you are. That you, you are the creator of the universe and you're so big, but also that you actually show us parts of that. That we are so finite and so small that we want to be able to appreciate you because you're so other and you're so holy. And so, Lord, we thank you for the blessings every day that you give us of, of, of just revealing yourself to us. And we ask that you would reveal and you know, show yourself like we just saying, show us, you know, show us yourself, you know, show your love to us. Lord, pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so, if you guys remember, we know this is going to be a follow-up to where we were last week. Okay, I'm going to give like a, a blitz, you know, summary. Okay, we Ed talked about Exodus chapter 22, 23, and, and uh, or 32, 33, 34, um, and the idea. I mean, so basically, we have Israel. Israel's a nation, and it says that you know Israel was God's chosen nation. They are a people, and this entire people group is enslaved by this nation of Egypt. They're working as slaves. You know they they're you know it's not the best life. Um, they're crying out to God, and they're saying, God, please save us. Okay, and God brings up this man named Moses. Moses comes back. He leads the Israel out of Egypt, and uh, you know basically he can. You know Pharaoh's just like. You know, uh, that enough, you know, you guys just go, you know, the Lord uh, he, uh, gave, gave him enough for he couldn't refuse. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so they're, they're marching out. They do crazy stuff. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But he's going through the Red Sea. Uh, and they're going, you know, he's, he's springing water out of rocks. They're, this this crazy. But what we're going to read here all together is this moment where God reveals, he says his own name. You know, like, like let's 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 all let's all listen in and, and stop and pause. We're gonna read it all together. Okay? Exodus thirty-four, chapter six or chapter thirty-four, verses six and seven. Um, let's actually let's all of us read it out loud together. Okay? Um, so I'll, I'll start. The Lord passed this before him and proclaimed. Let's all say this here. The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Wow. This is straight from the source. This is straight from our Father, our Protector, our Creator, all these things. You know, it's, it's straight from His own mouth. You know, if, if you guys, you know, find yourself having trouble, like, uh, praising God, like, you know how we talk about the acts, uh, prayer, like, adoration, confession, thanks, supplication. You know, if, we, if you have trouble praising God for who he is, like, you can just start here. This is what he says about himself. Okay? We're going to talk about this this morning. Um, honestly, you know, we, we can't talk about this whole thing. It's, it's so big. You know, it's kind of like um, a hash, hashtag God problems. When he, when he tries to say his name... He can't just sum it up in a word. He has to keep phrase after phrase after phrase, pull all this stuff, just to try to give us like a, a summary of who he is. 
Okay, and then one small disclaimer before I keep moving on. Um, we're not going to talk about the latter half of seven. I, I just want to be upfront and honest with that you know, because you know it's it, it it's it could be troublesome when you read it. It kind of, kind of like makes you like, what, what does that what does that mean? Maybe it conflicts you know the rest of what he's saying. Um, I just I just want to be upfront before you head you know go. I, I just we don't have time to to delve into that. What we're going to talk about this morning is God's faithfulness. That's what we're going to talk about. Um, I believe I could comfortably like explain what he's trying to say with seven and on. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's going to be another time. You know, God promised we can only deal with one part of those phrase <laughs> once. Um, okay, so the the first point that you guys have in your bulletin, okay, um, this is what I this is you know my thoughts on is faithfulness is not what God does. Faithfulness is who He is. Okay, those are your first blanks. Faithfulness is not what God does; um, it is who He is. Right. Um, you know, if we, if we think about names here, okay, uh, you know, you, you guys, like, if you guys were to, were to stand up and start to describe me, you know, that, that that would be nice. You know, but if you really want to know my personal thoughts and feelings, you should just, you know, ask me, right? And I would, I would tell you, um, you know. And then, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, people in this room. You know, like, you know, say, you know, Ian, you know, Ian's got, you know, a great, great job right now, you know, and. And let's say he has, you know, a lot, you know, a, a, a lot of money, all right? And he lives by himself. He's in an apartment, but there's this other single mom, you know, with some ladies that live next to him. Um, and Ian uh, has has a, has a generous heart. He actually lends his neighbor a couple hundred dollars for groceries every now and then. Okay. So what what we see is what we once you have a pattern of behavior. You know, once you see, like, oh, yeah, man, Ian, you give that lady $100, like, every couple of weeks, you know. Then, over some time, after you observe those actions, then you say, you know what, Ian is generous. And that almost becomes, like, a name of Ian, right? Okay, and, you know, and it's, it's after you have observed it over a pattern, a routine of behavior. Okay, anybody who's been around um, Andrew Jive knows that when he opens his mouth about the Bible or about, you know, his, his thoughts, um, a, a lot of just wise truth comes out, you know, and uh, and how how do you know this? You know, you you know this because um, you're in Bible study with him, and after X amount of times, after you've observed it, and it becomes to be a pattern. Like, oh man, every time this guy opens his mouth, like I feel like it's really valuable, and I want to listen. It's like every time it's like, yeah, that's really true. So then, what do you do? You begin to call Andrew wise. Andrew is wise. It becomes the name of him. Okay. But this is the this is the hair that I want to split. Okay, is that faithfulness is not what God does. Faithfulness is who He is. Okay, and this is this is what this is what it means. This is the big difference. Is what happens if Ian, you know, has you know a, a new a new base, you know, really expensive base that he wants to buy, and he starts saying, you know what, I need this money for myself. I'm not going to give this you know this lady any more money. I've helped her enough. You know, that's like she's. You know, he, is, he has his reasons. Maybe she, you know, has bad taste in music. She blares, you know, my Cyrus 24-7. You know, he's just like, I can't do this anymore, you know. But, but what happens, though? What happens if you start to observe that? You will, over time, stop calling Ian generous, right? You know, what, what, what if I go to, to what if you're in, you're in class right now, you're struggling with some engineering homework, and you go to Andrew Jai, and you're like, Andrew, can you, can you help me with this? And he's like, you know what? I've been learning how to play bass recently. You know what you should do? Just, just let's just drop your classes. We'll create a band, <laughs> and we'll move down to Nashville. You won't even have to worry about the, the grades. You know, we don't need school. I didn't come here to you know learn school. <laughs> um, the, uh, the so so. You know, what if you did that? Well, at that point, you're gonna you know that's not wise. If that becomes a pattern, you you stop calling Andrew wise. Am I, is that right? Does that make does that make sense? Okay, like the point that I'm saying is God is God's character is not like that. God is faithfulness. It is actually who He is. It's not about what we observe of, of Him. You know, it's not He's not faithful because you can look in your life and you can see things that He's been faithful in. If you do that, you're going to run into problems, and that's what we're going to talk about. You know, and we'll, we'll dive into that. Um, first, I want to I want to flip over to a passage in Second Timothy because I think Paul says it much better than I am right now. Um, so let's read this here, 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13. The saying is trustworthy. So apparently this is pe things people just said, you know, this is like a, a saying they said back in the day. Uh, Paul's saying, so for the saying is trustworthy, 
If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Okay? So, if we have died, Christ died, we died, Christ lives, we live, right? It's, it's, a, it's a relationship. It makes sense. It's very logical. Okay? If we endure, we will also reign with him. Logical conclusion. If you persevere through this, you're going to have these, these, uh, these rewards. You're going to be enduring. Um, if we deny him, he also will deny us. It's a, little, it's a little harsh, but I mean, it makes sense, right? It's A equals B. You know, a, if you deny, then I'm going to deny you. But if we are faithless, he remains faithful. You know, for he cannot deny himself. I love how Paul says that. What he's saying is faithfulness is God's character. So we, faithfulness is not influenced by what you choose to do. Faithfulness is not influenced by what you observe of God, because then once you're not observing faithfulness, then, you st then you're like, oh, well, I don't know if God's really faithful. That's, that's going to be problematic every time. Okay, so um, let's, let's turn back to, um, let's turn back to, to Exodus, okay? You guys can follow along with me. We're going to see this um, in action, okay? Um, so we're going to start with Exodus chapter 14, verses 11 through 12. Got to get there too here. Um, so, so what we're what we're doing? I'll give you a little context about where we're jumping to. Okay, we just all read aloud the moment where Moses is is with God on the mountain, and he reveals his name. He reveals himself. Okay, and this is after Israel has already been taken out of Egypt. We're going to go backwards in time, and we're going to observe that little that little uh, story, okay? Um, so Israel has been, you know, Pharaoh says, you guys are free to go, um, and Israel is marching all around with, you know, or marching out with Moses as their leader, um, and then they get to the Red Sea, and there's a dead end. And they turn around, and they're like, oh, it's the entire Egyptian army with swords and armor and horses and chariots are coming fast on them. This, this is what they say. They say to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? A lot of, a lot of sarcasm there, right? <laughs> uh, what have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is, th is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Okay? Now, first of all, this is a bunch of bullcrap, okay? <laughs> they did not say, like, didn't we say we should just leave us and serve the Egyptians? That is, like, that's ridiculous, okay? They've been crying out to God for years and years, and because God heard their cry, he rose up, he rose up Moses to deliver them. So that's, that's nonsense, okay? But all, I, with this passage, if you think about it, it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. We can have some sympathy with these people, right? Put yourself in their shoes. You have just been let out of your home. That you've had, probably you're know, these people of this generation, they, all they've known was Egypt. Um, and they, you know, are, are they're at a dead end. There's this giant body of water, and you turn around, and the entire Egyptian army is coming to you with spears to kill you. Uh, granted, you might have your faith challenged. I don't know if I would be able to be stand firm and really believe in God at that moment. Okay, but, this, but we're going to move on. Okay, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, what happens here, God splits a body of water in half. It's just like, whoop, and they just like, here you go. And they just walk through, you know, like, like an aquarium. They're walking through, and they just got fishes, like, in these invisible walls, you know, as they're going through, walking through the Dead Sea. Okay, well, let's, let's fast forward. We're going to go to the next passage, Exodus, Exodus 16, 3. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we have had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. It's like, really? You just walked through a giant body of water. You walked on dry ground as the ocean had invisible walls holding back the water. And then you saw the entire Egyptian army perish in that same sea. You know, why are you then already complaining about hunger? Like, do you not have just some, like, how do you so quickly turn your back on God? The Israel is being very, very faithless. 
in this moment. Okay? One more example, okay? Uh, Exodus 17, 2 to 4. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? Well, the people thirst there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? Again, same, same argument. For us to kill us, us and our children with our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. It's like, I am not even God at this moment. But I just want to punch these people in the face. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, how, how do you see so many miracles and still turn your back on the Lord with the minute that you have trouble? Okay, I'm going to propose something. I don't think this is necessarily the answer. But what I think is a, is a very critical thing is that, is your, I think it's the next uh, blanks in your bulletin. Um, uh, Israel worshipped God for what he did rather than who he is. So go ahead and write that down. Israel worshiped God for, um, for what he did, not for who he is. Well, does, that, does that make sense? You know, um, They are seeing these miracles, but their faith is shattered immediately once they are, are in need, and God's no longer apparently being faithful in that moment. You know, I liked you know what Caleb was saying a couple of weeks ago about how he had that moment. You guys remember when he had that moment, had passion, you know, where he was praying and there was like no one else was around. He was just he felt so small and he just felt like he was truly in the presence of the Lord, praising him in that moment. You know, but the point that he was making, you pointed to me right after that, is that you can't live in that moment. Like life, life goes on. You know, that's going to be eternity. And that's going to be a great place, but. You can't define God by observations and behaviors that you, as a finite person, are, are involved in. You will get yourself into trouble. You're going to really start to struggle when, when life is bad because you're not going to because you've been building, you know, kind of your, you know, like, not it's not what the passage means, but it's kind of like you're you're building your house on you know sand, you know, as as because you're 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 building a foundation that is not actually who God really is. And so the second that you have some turmoil, you have a storm, um, you're, you're, you're going to crumble. You're, you're, your faith and trust in God is going to be completely rocked. Okay, this is what the Israels, this is what the Israelites, you know, are, are struggling with. Um, but Second Timothy, you know, reminds us that, you know, when we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. I have, like, I'll tell you guys um, a personal story, all right? My, um, my senior year of, uh, of high school, um, I was, I, I decided I wanted to be a music major. Um, so I was, I, I've always, I've always grown up wanting to be uh, a Buckeye. Uh, my, my parents were, uh, were big, you know, huge Buckeye fans. My dad was in the band, he was in uh, the alumni. And uh, even going back to grade school, we would take trips down to uh, to Columbus for the Ohio State football games. So I've always wanted to be a Buckeye. Uh, I decided I wanted to be a music major in, in, in high school as well. So I started to apply uh, with music majors. Um, the process is a little bit different. Um, they when you when you come to Ohio State, you have to audition. You have to apply twice. You have to apply to get into the school with your ACT and your grades, right? Uh, but then you also have to audition to get into the actual studio. And audition means that you perform in front of judges, and if you are good enough, they accept you. Um, and we, they're taking like three or four people, you know, out of the entire country. Um, now, and granted, there's not like it's not really like hundreds of people waiting at the door, you know, like to get in, you know. But you know, it's it's very competitive. They're only going to take three or four people. Um, so I apply to Ohio State. I apply to Bowling Green, back where you know, close to where I was home, where I was growing, growing up. And uh, I just, I just applied to be honest. I took Bowling Green just to give me another practice for my Ohio State audition because I was just tunnel vision. So I get accepted to Bowling Green academically. I get accepted to Bowling Green through the music department. department. I feel great. And I get a letter back from Ohio State. And like, hey, we accept you. Your grades are good enough. Your ACT score, you know, it's been great. We accept you. Um, I get my uh, letter from the music department from my professor, and she she denies me getting in. 
at this moment, I'm just, I'm just crushed. Like, have you guys ever had a moment like that, you know, where you were building up to this one thing, then you put some eggs in one basket, and then that basket falls, and you're like, what in the world do I do now? I've always wanted to be a Buckeye. My two best friends are coming down here to Columbus, you know, and uh, I, I, I don't want to go to Bowling Green. <laughs> Um, so I had this dilemma, like, do I, go up to, do I go to Bowling Green, keep my music degree, or do I still come down here to Ohio State and pick a different major? You know, or it occurred to me that, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I could come down here to Ohio State and then re-audition a year later. Okay, so what I do is I, I send an email to the, pro to the professor who denied me, and I say, hey, can you, um, can you just give me, like, a, a ranking, like, if, if there were 30 people that auditioned, would I, would I like, 29, like, I mean, should I just give up and like, it just is hopeless, like it's just a waste of time? Um, or was I like, can you at least let me know, was I close to the cutoff? You know, like was it really kind of a tough decision for you? Because if it was, then I'm gonna work really hard. Uh, I would love if you tell me some of my weaknesses for the next six months, the next year, I'm gonna work on those, I'm gonna re-audition, I'm gonna get in, you know. Uh, I mean, I didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and then, I, and then I just start to pray, you know. And don't get me wrong, this is, this is not like a holy prayer. These are very self-righteous <laughs> prayers. Okay, this is like a little kid, like, please, God, can you just work this out? You know, very self-centered. I'm not really necessarily concerned with what he wants in my life. I'm just, you know, very immature prayers at this point, okay? This is what happens. Um, the, the unthinkable, okay? I wasn't even planning on this. This didn't really cross my mind. I get the... Uh, it's actually another thing about it. It's kind of like, um, it's as if he did immeasurably more than I could ever think or imagine. You know, that's exactly what Paul phrases it as. Um, and I get the letter back from uh, my, my professor, and she's like, well, Chris, based on your email, I can see a ne an extra level of your dedication and your hard work. Um, I'm actually going to reverse my decision, um, and I'm going to uh, go back to Ohio State and say, hey, you know, I, I have one more person to add to my list. And so I come in here fall, you know, and it just everything was just worked out. Okay, beautiful thing, beautiful picture of God's faithfulness as a little, you know, immature toddler just begging you for things, okay? But here, here I gotta continue the story. This is where it gets, this is where it gets, you know, applicable to what we're talking about. I get here and I, I, I run into a wall, okay? Music. Music majors, it's really, really hard, okay? The expectation of a music major is you take 24 credit hours every quarter. Like, that's just the norm. You have to petition Ohio State because they don't even allow it. It was, it was a quarter, so, like, you I mean, it's not as bad as doing 24 in semesters. So like, I think that's, that's, you know, impossible. But um, it was 24-hour credit hours every single quarter. Like, insane. On top of that, the studio requires four hours of practice every single day. It's unbelievable. 24 credit hours, and then these four like invisible hours. They don't count towards anything. They're just like, you need to be practicing marimba and timpani four hours a day. Now, I never did that. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I, I, mean I, I tried. There were a couple of people that maybe did that. It was a very high expectation. Okay, but this is what happened. I start to be incredibly overwhelmed. And so much anxiety. I was, I was clearly like the, the worst one in the studio. So I had this kind of constant pressure. Nobody likes being the worst, you know, out of, out of everybody. Um, and I started to cry out to God. I'm just like, why, why is this like, why is this so hard? Can you please help me? And seriously, like a toddler, I started to ask, like, can you get me out of this? Can you make can something happen? I started to look for ways out. Like, I'm, I'm little, I'm not, no joke. I'm pleading God, like, how can I get out of this? You know, e easily, of course. Um, and there's no, e there's no easy way out. Uh, it's ridiculous. They, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna bend the music requirement rules so that I can graduate the music degree. Um, and this is what, when I look back, this is what I see. I see my life, I see myself in the Israelites. Okay? I, you know, I picture God in this almighty throne, throne room, as he should be, just ginormous and magnificent, this picture that we've been painting this entire month, okay? And I come in there, 
you know, just like a, like a little kid with muddy shoes, and I'm just like tramping around, you know, I come in like, God, please, can you do this for me? Like, you, you mean, I, I'm in here now, but it's so hard, can you just fix this? You know, and I'm like, you know, I'm leaving like muddy footprints over his, you know, pristine throne room, and God, because he is gracious and merciful, and he's slow to anger, he's so much patience, and he's faithful, you know, he, he remains faithful to me. But as I look back, this is what's happening. As he's extending his hand of grace, I'm like grabbing out of, my, his, out of his hand and turning around before he even finishes his sentence. Do you, you guys see what I'm saying? I, I bet you that you could see this in your own life unless you were just a really, really, you know, good, good better than me. You know? <laughs> um, but this idea of this, this spoiled kid, I, I mean... Another, another picture that reminded me of, I don't know if any, everybody can relate to this, but you know Lord of the Rings, uh, where Frodo and Schmeagol were captured, and it's by Boromir. Um, and uh, there's this moment where they're captured, and somehow Schmeagol gets out, and he is frolicking in this pool that's like this forbidden pool. Like, nobody touches this water. I don't know if it was religious or, like, I don't know, it was something. And, like, it was, you were dead the second that you get in that pool. And they show a scene where Frodo, I mean, Frodo comes out, and all these guards, there's like 15 rangemen with arrows pointed towards Smeagol. And Smeagol is just like frolicking. He's singing a song, like, and he's like, he's picking up the, uh, the fish and smashing it on the rock. And he's just like, you know, digging into this fish. He's in this forbidden pool, and he has no clue what he's doing. He has no clue what he's doing. I think that this is our lives. I think this, this, is, this is how we treat God. This is how I treated God. You have this holy being that's so, I think, praise God that he is patient and slow to anger and, and merciful and he's faithful to me. Because my life that I live is so, is so offensive. Because he is, he, I come to him with these needs and these lists and I, I, I'm then turning my back and not giving him a, you know, not giving a rip about, you know, what he's saying, how he's directing to me. You know, my freshman year, like, there were two guys that came to know Christ in, on my floor, just on my one floor. I was completely absent from this. I had, I had no relationship with these people. I look back, I'm just like, man, I wasted my, I wasted my life. And I, I was just so self-centered and so consumed and so faithless. You know, like, faithlessness. I believe that there are, are two kind of, kinds of people, you know, in this type of issue, okay? Um, the first person, and you can, re, you can, excuse me, you can write this down. The first person is the person who needs to be broken over their own faithlessness. Okay? The person who needs to be broken over their own faith, faithlessness. So this, this, this is me, okay? I, I challenge you guys to, to look at your own life and then see if you think this might be you. This is the person who, like a little kid, you know, walks in with his muddy shoes to this, this throne room of God that has the nerve to, to demand faithfulness from him and when he has lived a life of complete disobedience. And we need to be broken over our own faithlessness. Okay, this means like understanding that you know you have been this person that has completely turned your back on God. It's you, no one here is, is capable of living that life. So I know that at least a little bit of this is in all of us. You know, maybe you really really struggle with this, and you know there's some people in this room that need to really like understand and look up and be like, "Wow, I am so sorry." You know, like this this incredible reverence. You know, like, like Andy was, was, was talking about with, uh, with Isaiah. It's like, woe is me, a person with unclean lips. lips. Okay, this you know, person needs to be broken over their own faithlessness. The second person, you can write this down as well. Okay, the second person is the person who needs to understand the magnificence of God's faithfulness. Okay, the, the first person is completely oblivious to how offensive his life really is. 
Because God's been so good to him, and he has given, hasn't given God a second thought in his life. He's been completely disobedient. The second person very much realizes their, their, their shame, their guilt, um, and they actually need to understand the significance and the, the magnificence of God's faithfulness. They, they need to understand, like, wow, like, God, I, I, they, 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 this person will struggle with, you know, uh, I, I've, done, I've done too much. My life, I'm just, I'm just too bad of a person. You know, the first person thinks that they're a good person and they're okay. The other person says, oh, no, "I'm not forgivable." You know, and they, uh, and, and both people have a very similar problem. And it's what we've been talking about this entire, uh, this entire series. They both serve a small God. Both people, okay, they both serve a small God. The first person. Um, he, 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 his God is small, and, uh, and it's, it, he doesn't understand the, the complete reverence and the holiness and just the magnificence of God compared to him. If he really, he, his God is too small because, um, because he's too, you know, they, they think they can be in the room, the room together, basically, if that, if that makes sense. Okay, so, that, so but the second person, they also have the same issue. They believe God, and they struggle with the idea, and, and their God is too small. Because they don't, they don't really see and really fully believe, and can jump in with two feet, that God is faithful to them. And that he, like, he can separate their sin as far as the east is from the west, and that he is, is incredibly gracious and merciful and slow to anger, steadfast in love and faithfulness for generations. They both you know, worship a very, a very small God. And this entire process of what we're talking about is in trying to, uh, trying to see God for who he really is. God is magnificent. What the definition we're using is beyond all size and beauty. So where, where, do, you guys, where do you guys fall with that? Could you, could you relate to either, to either one? I'm, I'm certainly that, that, that first person. Um, I need to be, continually need to be broken over, you know, how, how offensive my life is, really, and how unfaithful I am to, to my Creator. This all comes back to God is revealing Himself to us on a day-to-day -day basis. How does God, how do you see God working in your life? He's giving you these little snapshots. It's for your benefit. You are a finite, very small being, and we all rely on these glimpses, these, the, the, the Exodus 34 moments where God tells us who he is. Because what we can do is we go to those moments and we're like, okay, I, I need to correct my view. I need to have a bigger God. You just said, you just described who you are. That's not who I worship with you every day. I mean, does it does it seem to make more sense now that we've now that we've gone back to the Israelites' journey and how just nagging they were along the way? But God, at that you know, when God's talking to Moses, this is after all those events. So does, now does it does it all like kind of fit into place? Do you understand what God's saying? You know, He has had a disobedient, nagging, impatient, you know, broken, weak nation that he has been leading out of captivity just as they asked him to. And he is sitting on the mountain in front of, of, of Moses. He's like, listen, Moses, you can't see my face because you will die. You are so unworthy. You, even you, I really like you, Moses, but you cannot see my face. I'll tell you what, I'll walk by. You can, take, you know, you can see a little bit of my hiding, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal my name to you. Okay, these are the moments that we've got to, to really grab onto. We've got to really understand how big our God really is. Okay, and finally, last thought that I'll leave us with, okay, is we go back to 34 verse 8. What, what, what is our response to this? No matter who per, which person you are, no matter how small your God really is, you know, either way, this is, what, this is the next thing that happens after God reveals his name. The very next words, and Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. This is our response. Okay? God is a faithful God, and he is faithful to you. 
He's faithful to you despite of what you do. It's not based on what you observe. He's not faithful because of the blessings he's given you. He's not faithful because you can read the passages in the past. He's faithful because he is it's actually who he is. Any, rem, any, any remnants of, of faithfulness that we see in our day-to-day -day life is merely borrowed virtue of God, the creator of the universe. And when we get a hold of that, when we really see it, we bow our heads and we worship. And we say, God, first, God, we, we adore you. God, you are merciful and generous and patient and slow to anger. You're so faithful. You're so loving. And then we confess, Lord, I am so unworthy. I'm, I'm so sorry that I've lived my life so selfishly. I'm so sorry that even though you've been so good to me, I still turn on my own, you know, behaviors. I'm still disobedient. Um, I don't, you know, give you the, the reverence and the glory that you deserve. And then we thank him for his, his faithfulness despite all of that. Despite everything that we've done, God is still faithful. And it's because it's who he is. And he cannot deny himself. So I'm, I'm going to pray, um, and the band's going to come up, and we're going to finish with a song that just, the words are so powerful, straight out of Revelation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. And that's, so, that's, a, that's our response. That's our response as, as we are, are just praising God and stopping and thinking Lord, you are so faithful beyond any measure that I could ever understand. Thank you for showing me, and I'm going to bow my head and I'm going to worship. So the band can come up. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, finish out with prayer. Um, you guys can go ahead and stand up with me, actually. Stand up, you know, and we'll, we'll bow our head. Um, Lord, Lord, you are so good. God, you are so good to us. You've just blessed us beyond measure, Lord. You, um, you do it immeasurably more than we can ever even think or, or imagine. And God, we, we all confess to you as a body that we have been unfaithful. Lord, I, I think back to the story of Hosea, the picture that you picture, that that, that is us. We are the, the, the lover that continually goes for other affections and continually turns away from you, the faithful one, to, to serve our own desires and our own temporal interests and, and we just are so disobedient, Lord. And we confess that to you this morning and then we bow down and we say, thank you, God, because you are still faithful. Despite our unfaithfulness, you are still faithful to us, Lord, and we, and we love you for that. And we can never fully repay or even really understand and really appreciate how big of a sacrifice that is, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for coming down and giving your life. Um, the, as we were still sinners, you came down and you gave your life for us. As we were still being in the midst of our unfaithfulness, in the midst of our adultery, you came down and you saved our lives, God. We, we thank you for that. We praise you. And we, and we just... We bow our heads and we, we continue to worship you uh, this morning. Uh, Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name.